So uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at IKFK blending. So um, let's get rid of all this stuff. So we'll just start with the basics. I'm going to draw a chain. And for IKFK blending, first thing you want to do is let's say let's let's just say I have some IK keys. Key this here. Key this here. Key this here. Key this here. Now, typically you don't use IKFK blending to be blend between IK and FK. You use it to blend between a uh, global position. Well, I'll just show quickly what it's doing. So now I'm manipulating IK. The f one of the first things I noticed, actually, actually, I'll just show the basics first and then I'll get into it. So if you hit Control R, if I go uh, FK, IK blend, if I sweat this back into FK, I'm all set to animate between these different to different parts. So I'll, I'll just say, let's go say some FK keys here. Stand key. Okay. I don't I have I don't have the visual feedback turn on yet, so this might be confusing some people. But basically, you're blending between animating the chain in rotation and animating the chain in position. So if we go turn on. Uh, IKFK ghosting here, and we turn it on this solver. You can see as I, there's there's where my, I animated my IK, this blue chain right here, and here's where I animated the IK. And then you can blend between them. And you also use this slider for manipulation. So if I want to manipulate an FK, I just switch to here and manipulate FK. If I want to manipulate IK, I just switch to here and manipulate an IK. So you can see the FK is locked when I go, when I go into manipulate in FK. Now there's a couple there's a couple things where this this becomes useful. So the first one is um, you want to lock the hand to a position on the ground or a position on a wall or on a table. So let's say oh, we're gonna go uh, skeleton draw two D chain. And I got my rotation. So people like to animate in FK because they get better whip. It makes a lot of sense. Okay, so you know the rotations double up better as the arm as the arm goes along. And so I'll just take this and I'll animate it down. Let's say we're here. Key, and I got another thing here. And I want to animate this against a, a global key. So I've got a, um, I want to go in here and I want to say, I want to just lock this guy, you know, here for whatever reason. I'll just put something around there just so you see it. So let's say, you know, you're in an environment or, or something and there's something right around here and you want to be kind of near that and you want to have the hand locked down. Or let's, it, you know, it could be a ground plane or, or an object or a wall or whatever. Okay, so right here. Let's just set our marking to global. So you go down here and let's instead of local transform, let's turn on the global global position. Oh, we're going to save global keys here. So I'll just look that. So that way when I hit key, I've got this thing locked to there. So now as I do uh, IKFK blend, it's locked to that position. And if I select this and hit control R, it just it just blends between those. I go switch back and forth. Now global position is it it's fine. You can all, you can go animate it somewhere else. It's also nice when you go in there and do do uh, a chain a chain. But what what comes up is people have scenario where they want to have this you know, you want to have the hand or the foot or typically you're talking about hands here is to have that um stay straight. So you just go in and I think this option is great. You go effector rotation against bone, link with IKFK blending, and then when I'm in FK, let's say I want to, to animate it here. So let's change our marking. I'll include, uh, well, I've got it locked. I'll include rotation. Let's hit key, and bang. I can do my FK IK blending. And you see the way that the, the wrist is, is going in? and locking to that position, it, it's automatically 
locking the hand in orientation on the ground as you're moving around which is which is very handy so next next thing you could do here is instead of uh, you know coming in here and and gluing to this as a global key you could do it as a constraint it doesn't doesn't really matter how this thing's driven it can be driven by the mixer it can be driven by you know a bunch of you know scripted operators it, it doesn't matter so you just turn on constraint compensation and I'll do a constraint I'll do a constraint pose hit here bang and so what's what's nice about this then is it's relative it's locked to an exact relationship on the object and this is still this is still going to hold up so when I go do my uh, IKFK blending now no matter where I am it's just going to lock back into that into that pose uh, what's nice in XSI too is you can go and, and easily animate against those poses. So if we want to have, uh, you know, if I want to go here and uh, animate this thing moving, let's say I want this this hand running along a table. It's just a matter matter of keying and compensation against that constraint. Oops, I'm keying in multi. So I want to I want to release my keys. So now I'm uh, that's good. Now if you have constraint it's neat if you have constraint compensation on and you start keying it keys your local transform and it also keys the constraint so I'll key it here I'm going to key it here sliding along here I'll just slide on one axis along the table I'll key it here and I'll go key it here turn on constraint compensation so we've got our hand sliding along that table and it's it's a relative slide so if I can go blend back and forth if I go move this table over here oh, Okay, it doesn't make any difference. It just slides all across that thing and I can blend in and out of it anytime. So we try and keep things very flexible for blending constraints, bending IKFK, for for seeing everything together.